we're not press play DJs. We still do the beat matching and try to keep it a little more old school. And We need to be able to watch and react and, and make some decisions on the fly. And we do want to push people's boundaries. We do want to get them on board and then take them somewhere unfamiliar. We do a lot of prep work with each track where not only are we looking at what the key is, how that's going to flow, but all those buttons we're actually smashing are recutting songs. So we've got the version of the song we want. We did push play to make it start, but we can be pushing play on the intro, the vocal drop, a special breakdown, or the outro. So we might have two songs that are overlapping for a couple of minutes, and then we say, it's time to move on. Give me the vocals of this track, jump to the outro of this track. So we're basically doing a, a very hands-on linear edit of every track we're doing. Yeah, we'll have like certain little runs that we call them. We'll like go through you know, certain songs that are in key that complement one another. Sometimes it's like, vocal instrumental, vocal instrumental to kind of balance things out. And as far as ordering goes, it's different every time. So what we're doing when we meet here before a show is really saying, all right, we've got notes from this exact crowd last year. We've got notes from two shows, three shows last weekend. With all that info, we want to come out of this meeting with our best guess in order of the tracks we're going to need. It's usually about 90 songs. Yeah, around 90. We often jump out of that crate, but that way when we start that show and hit that drop track, because we're organized, we're not searching. We're spending less time searching. We're spending more time performing and then absorbing reactions. We, we firmly believe that DJ laptop face is not the way to go. <laughs> so we really try to get the information accessible, but out of the way of the audience. When we're at a show, when we're reacting, um, the way we react is not, oh, these guys really like house music or dubstep. It's more, they want to be, they want to be pushed more. They want to be happy. They, they're bored being happy because happy's boring right now. Like we need, that's, that's the sort of stuff we're jumping around with. And when we go into our fire crates, they're not grouped by, you know, time or, or uh, genre. They're grouped by emotion. When we do need to find stuff, we're searching in crates that are called things like dub womp, unexpected aggression, electro happy. These are what we need to know. If, if, if we identify the need to change something at a show, those are the, the terms yeah. we need to, to choose by. Our job is to say, we have spent all summer like designing what visceral means to us. And you know, frankly, we're really good and really qualified at telling you what that should be and what that should feel like. It's not just they're getting a lot of what they want. It's like, hey, we're Groove Boston. Like, we know what you want. Come with us. And then like, ah, we're going to get you here. We're going to get you here. And then like, boom, like, Full speed ahead, we, we got here, everyone's on board, nobody's uncomfortable, but you're listening to stuff that you have no idea where this came from. It's you know, a fully trans transformational experience. Good, good key adjustments. Yeah. It was real long, but we kept it relaxed. Kept yeah. a nice, easy pace. We added in a lot of those like real long runs of sing-alongs, but with those real dirty beats. You know, a lot of, a lot of punch. Yeah. With, uh, with the happy. Oh, I know this song. So it was cool. I think we really uh, succeeded in making it more accessible, but just as dirty when we got there. Let's do it again sometime. <laughs> oh my God!